But anyway, this is an exciting thing tonight. I just only got 10 minutes, so I'll jump right to it. We're at New Tech PDX. And who is the Roswell Flight Test Crew? Well, we're based here in Portland, Oregon. We're probably best known for our YouTube channel, which is over a million views and over 10,000 subscribers at this point. And we write... Let's hear it for YouTube. Yeah. And we write for basically every consumer publication that covers this subject. Model Aviation, Multi-Rotor Pilot, Rotor Drone, and RC Sport Flyer. What we're best known for doing are doing demonstrations with this technology you guys have been hearing about all night for industry to help first responders and scientific researchers get data, get information they couldn't get otherwise, either at all or at enormous cost and potentially risk to life and limb. We also teach classes and give public demonstrations. The photo in the lower right is also over at OMSI. Um, we do product reviews. Check out our YouTube channel for more of those. And we just go to a lot of community events and festivals. That's a sprint boat race in Tangent, Oregon, you see there. We're regulars to the Tiger Festival Balloons coming up in a few weeks. Although, the FAA has grounded us from this year's Tiger Festival Balloons. So, will not be seeing us if we're there. Send your hate mail to Director uh, Huerta <laughs> on the uh, Transportation, National Transportation Safety Board. I want to point out, and I, I'm assuming I'm preaching to the crowd here, if you're not all drone people, you're all certainly tech people. And so you know, along with me, there is a very bright future for drones here. Drones are going to help us save lives by providing first responders the intelligence they need to make immediate decisions, in this case, fighting a structural fire with a FLIR thermal imaging camera. This is one of our aircraft. They're going to get out there and they're going to improve crop yields, which is going to feed the world. This is a false color image of a vineyard, and the various shades of green are revealing plant health and deteriorations in plant health up to two weeks before they can be detected by the farmer on the ground. This is amazing technology, and they're giving us way more kick-ass action scenes. <laughs> Awesome. Drones are here to stay. Is there anything which can derail this very bright future? And it is a very bright future. Who are going to regulations? Regulations. Okay. regulations. Yes, that's true. Regulations could kill this, but I would argue that would actually be a byproduct because there is so much pent up demand for this technology. Here's what I think can derail this very bright future what I refer to as the Yahoo factor. Thanks, Yahoo. <laughs> now, how big, a, how big a deal really is the Yahoo factor? I pulled together some 2014 data for you, most recent available, obviously, and let's do some math based on that data. Okay, 20,000 personal sized drones, a lot of them looking an awful lot like this, came online, give or take, each month in the United States in 2014. Okay, so we got 20,000 of those a month, got 12 months in the year, what do we got? Verizon. <laughs> we have 240,000 personal sized drones sold by major manufacturers. The FAA had people start counting incidents in 2014, drone incidents, you know, so I put in quote marks there, because the word incident is very loosely defined, like a guy writes in and says, I saw a drone. <laughs> not that it endangered air traffic, not that it flew over a sensitive area, just literally an official report that I saw a drone contemplates an incident. Now, I was going to do the math, and it's a point with a lot of zeros, and then finally a one behind it, but I thought this is one of those things that's way more amenable if we do it with a graph. So I'm going to pull up a pie chart here, and the green you'll see are all the safe users of drones, and the red slice you see is the dangerous ones. <laughs> now, I realize that this is a bit of a problem here, so we're going to zoom in a little bit, and, um, oh, we, we still can't see any. All right, so we'll push it a little more. All right, we're looking at a compliance rate in excess of like one in 10,000. And I think there isn't a civilized nation in the world that wouldn't be satisfied if this was the rate of, of acceptance with drunk driving laws, let alone safely operating small unmanned remote controlled planes. I mean, this, we should be grateful to have this. And, and, and so my, to my point of view, the auto factor, really pretty small. This looks like a pretty good compliance rate. Who wouldn't take this? What's the problem? I'll tell you what the problem is. This happens once, jet turbine and drone interact, we lose everything immediately. This gets sent back 10 years because the media will destroy us. This, this is it. And you're right, the regulations will do it. But at this point, we are slowly winning the regulatory battle 
because we've got Congress on our side, we're being outperformed by Bolivia and aviation, it's very depressing, and so we are winning the fight, but this will set us back immediately two decades. How do we prevent this? Education is the key. We have to educate every single user out there how to safely use these aircraft, how to fly them responsibly, and the industry is swiveling mightily and rapidly to engage with this. The three organizations you see here below, and I, I'm always remiss to say something positive about the FAA, but they are four square behind this, and they're even coming out with an app to support it. But the AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, the world's most unwieldy acronym, by the way, for those of you keeping score at home, <laughs> along with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, which is our, our hard fighting, sued the FAA to keep them off our backs, model aviation thing. By the way, they've been around longer than the Civil Aeronautics Board and the FAA, and they've got a better safety record, too. And then the Small UAV Coalition, which um, you'll be hearing from a member of the Small UAV, UAV Coalition coming up first, are pushing this program. This is a great initiative, but it's really up to all of us. I'm particularly talking to people in the drone room, the, the drone people in the room here. It is not enough to follow the rules. You have to get out there and actively encourage other people to follow the rules, or it doesn't count for anything. Because it's the one Yahoo, it's the one guy who's going to mess up. So to all the drone people out there, anyone who's responsible enough to be here is already doing it right. And I thank you for that, and the whole industry thanks you for that. But it's not enough. You see somebody doing about it the wrong way, you have to call them out on that. It's painful, it can be embarrassing, but you have to do it. All of our futures depend on it. Ladies and gentlemen, end of the thank you so much. Thank you.